こんにちはライトです今回はカナダ編第2弾ということでプロジェクトアウトサイダーズの皆さんへのインタビューをお送りしますプロジェクトアウトサイダーズは社会的用語を経験した若者たちで彼らもドキュメンタリー映画を制作していますその時は彼らの映画の完成まであと数ヶ月という追い込みの時期にもかかわらずリアルボイスの上映イベントに駆けつけてくれましたそしてこのインタビューの後にはプロジェクトアウトサイダーズとスリーブラックスが今後とも継続して交流を交わしていくという覚え書きを交わしましたそんなことがあった日にインタビューもさせていただいたんですが彼らが映画を作った理由や活動への思いについて聞いてみました今回僕は撮影に専念するためにカメラの後ろにいるんですけれどもインタビューの見どころはブロが感動のあまり言葉に詰まってしまうという珍しいシーンがありますのでぜひ彼の表情も見てみてくださいではどうぞよろしくお願いします。よろしくお願いします。Hello. Hi, こんにちは。Hi, I'm Rose,、um, former youth in care, and yeah, thanks for having me. Hi, I'm Shanice. I'm the founder of Project Outsiders and a former youth in care. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Ashvin. I'm an ally, and I'm co-directing the film with Shanice. Thank you so much. I'm very excited. <laughs> Welcome to Toronto. Thank you. What are you doing So, we are producing a documentary that's centered around youth and care, specifically in Ontario. And we wanted to kind of understand the question of how does a young person's identity change as they navigate the child welfare system by themselves. So, We got this amazing opportunity to do this documentary and showcase it at TIFF, inviting all of the members at,、um, around the child welfare ministers and、um, executive directors to watch and have a discussion with us. Like, Honestly, like,、um, officially one year, because、mm-hmm. we started last August、Perfect. production. Yeah. yeah. And we've been like sorting like contracts and funding for like one year. So, two years all together working on this project.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. It doesn't feel like, like two years, it feels longer for me. It feels like we've been working on this for like five years or something, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it's just because we went through a lot.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, we went through a lot of experiences together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of learning and trying. A lot of emotion. A lot of emotion. Like, I was in the movie, and 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 I was in the movie. 残って結構こう何だろう継続して撮ることがに難しさがあったんですけどそういうことはありましたか ？Four。ああ。Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's four, four youth, all from Care. We tried to pick four people who had different types of identities. So we have one person who's indigenous, like first the indigenous First Nations in Canada, and before colonization, someone who has that identity. And someone who's a black youth, someone who grew up in a wheelchair, and we also have a, w- a girl as well. Yes, we definitely went on a really tough journey finding the youth at the、mm-hmm. very beginning.、Yeah. Um, a lot of youth、um, could be like unresponsive or unsure whether they want to be that vulnerable publicly. So、um, we had a lot of young people leave,、um, some who I guess、um, were just there from the very beginning and are very excited. And for us, I think we had to change our approach a little bit as to how we kind of make young people feel safe. And show them like, the impact of like, you know, us not necessarily talking about things that they're uncomfortable about in their stories, but also、um, the things that they can share, what messages that's going to essentially show to the sector. Yeah. 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 Their entire life story. So it's, it, it's a lot. Yeah, it's definitely a lot. Also, before our documentary, we had a podcast. And like Rose was actually one of the young people on our podcast that 
um, opened up about her experiences and care. And we, so we got to sit down initially with young people without like showing their, actually we did show their faces a little bit. We were on camera. Um, but we had uh, almost like a tester before going into like a really big project and getting down to sit down with like young people like Rose and just like um, talk about various elements of like foster care, like what it's like to be in a religious household, what it's like to be in group homes. And um, I think that made us comfortable initially taking on this bigger project. <laughs> it actually happened a little bit by mistake. <laughs> 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 And because <laughs> like for us, we were going to make a season two of our podcast <laughs> and and because of like certain like, um, you know, things that had happened initially just with like uh, figuring, figuring out how to, you know, deal with grants and funders and relationships with new organizations and um, building up a team. We wanted to find a way to build capacity first as an organization. And so we tried to figure out a way to do one big project with an opportunity to acquire equipment, to learn skills, to learn about production a little bit more seriously. And so instead of doing like 12 episodes of a podcast again, we did one big film and it wasn't that much easier. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Could I also ask a question to, to you? How did you, um, how did you select the one person that you did your documentary about? あ、一番 として考えてて、クラフクを now that I, I'm thinking about it, it's really interesting that these youth trusted us so like quickly. Mm -hmm. But it, I think it's what, what? What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I think I think it's understandable why you're surprised. I do think the reason it happened though is because the approach was different. You 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 made a relationship first with a lot of these youth before asking for the documentary. ユニューザンビフォーヘンコロナで困ってる時にみんなに食品を送ったりとかやっぱりそういうあの何か一緒に過ごす時間がたくさんあったのは大きかったですそれでもやっぱりすごくこうみんなの不安だったり声を上げる
Yeah, and I think what's really important um, with our organization or Shanice's organization, I think even with this documentary and even this right now, and even what you guys are doing is to show an ex a lot of kids are scared to speak about their story and to speak up, which has been the main foundation of why issues and things in the system haven't changed. So I'm hoping that now that there's, you know, this new age of generation, we can advocate and show as an example that you should stand up for yourself and you should advocate because that's how voices are heard, right? So, yeah. Okay. Mm. <laughs> this is a good conversation. Yeah, mm. thank you. Now. Um, well, when I was 17, I remember being in a group home and feeling um, suffocated. I felt like I was suffocating because I had no way of making my situation better. I wasn't being listened to and I wasn't being treated right. And so the combination of those two made me feel like there is no way to escape um, poverty, no way of escaping tragedy yeah. or stress. Yeah. Um, and, and so I wanted to make my voice heard in some way. And so ever since I was 17, I was slowly thinking of ways to do that. Um, so this has been a plan of mine ever since I was in care and it's so interesting to see it manifested into reality um, and yeah it, it was like a vision a dream into something real and I, I feel blessed I, so, I feel so blessed and I say it all the time all the time I mean I'm not in the documentary uh, but I've been part of Project Outsider since like the beginning, basically. Um, so it's been awesome to see the, the evolution, I guess. Um, so proud of Shanice. Yeah, seriously, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I, th I think for me, like I'm a musician, I'm an artist, I'm a singer songwriter. So, you know, um, that has been the direction I've gone. Um, and I think the only reason I really went through that direction was because of my experiences in life and care is one of them. Um, I've always struggled with feeling accepted and depression and stuff like that. And I felt, you know, I went through so many different homes and abuse and stuff. And I felt like music was what kept me going and inspired. So, yeah. So. I'm not from CARE, and I think I'm maybe the only person on the team? No, not the only person. There's some others. Yeah, so I'm not from CARE, but I'm really, really invested in the project. And I think over the years, I, I really spent the last maybe four or five years changing a lot. and. I think especially through COVID, I started to do meditation a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> and I started to reflect on what I was doing in my life and why. And I couldn't find um, a direct reason to do anything. <laughs> so I started to think about, you know, if there's no purpose that I can find, then what's the best one I can think of? And it seems like the, the more I work to serve like collective well-being, the happier I am, and also the happier that obviously everyone else is, and there's no other, there's no other thing that's more important to do. And so it's like not only is it fulfilling for me, but it's also fulfilling for the world. So it feels like what I decided is as I go through life, I'm constantly in a very personal way trying to make all of my actions aligned with like being of service to the world and, <laughs> and so as I met and got close to Shinis like really fast it was like I learned so much about like how hard it is and and it just made me feel like this is a 
this is a, something that's worth spending time to do. And then I kind of just follow the flow of life and, and then see things through and like try to help as best I can. So yeah, I'm just learning and sharing like what, what I, <laughs> yeah. If I could add, he has been such an amazing friend and also person to this project. Like, um, before he had arrived, I definitely was burning out. Oops, sorry. Um, and, like, I met Ashwin and he was a ball of light, you know? Um, a really amazing, energetic, um, extroverted person that, like, I think was able to just bring joy wherever and in a space and where you're dealing with so much trauma and vulnerability you need that like happy loving spirit and I at the time I didn't have it anymore I was burning out I was getting depressed and I asked him partially like can you take over and be the bring the energy that I can't and if it wasn't for him, I'm telling you, the documentary wouldn't have been as successful. Yes, yeah. I'm serious. ここでまこちゃんも同じ質問である活動への原動力について語ります。施設で父と母と暮らしたことはなくて自分も一回死にそうになったんだけどあのその後に出会った本当に施設の方その一人の女性のおかげですごく元気になれて人として生きててよかったと思わせてもらえてその人がある日すごくこう悲しそうに自分は。あの正しい育て方ができたかわからないっていう風に言われてでその時に私がその人がどれだけ素晴らしい人だったかの証明になれるぐらいにすごくこう愛,愛してもらったからだから自分があのなんだろうなこう人として誰かのためにその人からたくさんのもらった愛情を同じ境遇の子たちに渡す。ことでその人の素晴らしさも証明できるしそのために私は本当だったらあの不幸な悲しい人生だったのがそうじゃなくなった意味っていうのはそこにあると思うからあのずっと人のために仲間たちのために生きたいと思ってる。Right. Wow. <laughs> I wanted to, you know, like there's one part of our film where、um, one of the youth, his name is Alex. And he says that there's a story when he was accused of getting into a fight, and、um, one of the, the, he was put into jail for a night, and one of the workers actually took him out of jail.、Um, for, for Alex, he felt surprised that they did that, and he said, You know, you must have actually believed that I was a good person in order to do that. And it became clear that he didn't believe that he was deserving of that. Before that happened, and that was such an important moment for him for someone to actually believe that he was worthy of love. まず皆さんの話を聞いて、もういろんな感情が出て、今うまく整理ができない。それぐらい素晴らしい話。うん<笑><笑>なので<笑>私が語るのはもうちょっと後でにするんですけど<笑>この後でもいいんですけどあのこの関係性が素晴らしいと思います。もう原動力です。なんか彼はあの本当にすごいなんだろうなすごいこう辛い思いをしたけどそれをおお前回
ごくこう明るくあの力に変えて仲間たちをこう支援してるけどすごくこう日本でも奇跡のような存在だと思われて。いるし、なんかぜひ後でゆっくりお話聞いてください。<笑> I'm excited to hear it. Yeah, it's you. Yeah. <笑><笑>話しなきゃいけない。I'm excited for us to like come together as a community. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Oh. Mm. 楽しい、嬉しいです、ね。うん、I'm glad. 最後は僕からの質問。映画を通して実現したいこと、社会へ求める変化について聞いてみました。The goal of our documentary is essentially to humanize youth in care. Is to remind people that young people in care are children. <laughs> That's like the message that we discovered at the end of the day is that they are people who are finding out how to be young again, how to accept themselves as a person, and how to allow other people to see them as a human being as well. And I, I think it's amazing because you get to see a bunch of young people who've gone through so much trauma be playful,、mm -hmm. be、um, mm -hmm. so warm and、mm -hmm. funny.、Mm -hmm. And while they're talking about like, some of the tragedies that they've w e n t through and they themselves are reflecting, they still could like, hug us. They're still、mm -hmm. so affectionate.、Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's something exciting to see. Because I don't think that we see a whole lot of that in such a technology heavy,、mm -hmm. social media heavy environment anymore. The authenticity of just being a person.、Mm -hmm. And so、um, I definitely implore you to see it. The change that we want to see happen immediately is a new way of engaging with young people in care, with decision makers. We wanted to show this to members of the ministry, to、um, key players in related sectors such as health, mental health, housing, policing, education, to come together to see how all of these various sectors all play a role in the success of one youth. And、um, I, I think if we are able to just engage, talk, collaborate directly, Um, you will see that we are the key to your solutions in trying to overcome our poverty. 最後にまこちゃんもリアルボイスを通して社会へ伝えたい思いを語りますあの70人の同じ仲間たちが出演してくれててでやっぱりみんな結構あの声を上げれるっていうことはもう解決してるとかあのもう大丈夫って思われるけどそうじゃなくてみんなもまだ苦しいし辛いし本当はすごく死にたかったりとかそういう思いがあってもそういう自分たちじゃなく未来の子どもたちのためにと思って勇気を出してまず声を上げたっていうことをすごくあの知ってほしいし。あの子供を虐待するっていうことがその子の人生を壊してなんかその育て方っていうのを日本でもう一度よく考えてほしいしそれっていけないことだよねってなんとなく思うんではなくて本当にいけないことなんだ子供たちのためには本当にできることは何だろうっていうそういうあのやっぱり。子どもの幸せっていうのは必ず大人の幸せにも通じているからやっぱりそこをもっと大切にできるあの日本になってほしいしまずはこの虐待の事実っていうことが本当になんとなくそういうのあるよねじゃなくてまず自分の隣にいる人身近にいる人でもあることかもしれない他人事じゃなく自分のことなんだっていうふうに感じてほしい。最後はハイタッチでインタビュー終了。本当にありがとうございました。本当に素敵な若者たちでした。社会背景や制度が違っても、まあ、当事者として同じ気持ちを持ちながら活動してるんだなとカメラを回しながら僕は思いました。そして僕たちよりも結構年下のはずなのに、なんか大人っぽいなっていう印象を受けました。まあ、こちゃんが子供っぽいのこのインタビューの後、去年の11月に彼らの映画は無事に上映されたそうです。僕たちもぜひこの映画を日本で見れるようにできたらなと思ってますので、ぜひご協力いただける方募集しております。まだまだカナダ編、今後も出していきますので
ぜひ楽しみにしてくださいではまたじゃあねー